The usual marriage in traditional cultures is uh, arranged for by the families. It's not um, a person-to-person -person decision at all. And this is true to this day in um, many parts of the world. This is not to say that in uh, arranged marriages of this kind there is no love. There is a lot of love. There's family love and uh, a rich love life on that um, level. So in the Middle Ages, of course, that was the kind of marriage that was sanctified by the church. And so the idea of, uh, of a real person-to-person -person marriage was very dangerous. It dangerous was, because it was heresy. It was not only heresy, it was adultery. And that was punishable by death. For instance, in the, in the Tristan romance, that, that's the crucial romance. Uh, of Tristan this. and Isolde? Yes. Isolde was engaged to marry King Mark. They had never seen each other. And uh, Tristan is sent over to fetch Isolde to Mark. And uh, Isolde's mother prepares a love potion so that uh, the two who are to be married will have real love for each other. And these two youngsters, they think the love potion is wine, and they drink it, and then they're overtaken with this love. But Brangain, the nurse of Isolde, realized what had happened. She went to Tristan and said, you have drunk your death. And Tristan said, if by my death you mean this agony of love, that is my life. If by my death you mean the punishment that we are to suffer, if discovered, which is namely execution, I accept that. But if by my death you mean eternal punishment in the fires of hell in which these people believed, I accept that too. That was uh, quite That's big stuff for a medieval Catholic because they believed in a literal hell. Well, these people did. Yes. So what's the significance of what he was saying? What he was saying is that this love is bigger even than death. Than pain, than anything. This is the affirmation of the pain of life in a, in a big way. And I would choose this pain for love now, even though it might mean everlasting pain and damnation in hell. That's right. And that was a marked change in how people... Well, that is an, uh, any life career that you choose in following your bliss should be chosen with that sense. Nobody can frighten me off from this thing. This is sort of the beginning of uh, the romantic idea of the Western individual taking matters into his or her own hands. Well, absolutely. I mean, you can see there are examples in Oriental uh, stories of this kind of thing, but it did not become a social system. It has now become the, the ideal, at any rate, of, of love in the Western world. Love from one's own experience. You're right. It's a very mysterious thing, uh, that electric thing that happens. And then the, the agony can, that can follow, which is that which uh, the troubadours celebrate, you know, the agony of the love, the sickness that the doctors cannot cure, the wound that can be healed only by the weapon that delivered the wound. Meaning? Well, the wound is the wound of my passion and agony of love for this creature. And the only one who can heal me is the one who delivered the blow, you know. So we often hurt most of the person we love and heal the hurt by the love that hurt. <laughs> That's something like that. That's the paradox of the job. What did you mean, Joe, when you said that the triumph of Tristan's view of love and vision of love, this beginning of romantic love in the West, was libido over credo? Well, the credo, I believe, and I believe not only in the laws, but I believe that these laws were instituted by God, and uh, there's no arguing with God. I mean, these laws are just uh, heavy weight on me, and uh, disobeying those is sin, and uh, it has to do with my eternal character. And the libido? <clears throat> libido is the impulse to life. Comes from where? comes from the, the heart. And the heart is what? 
The heart is the organ of opening up to somebody else. That's the human quality as opposed to the animal qualities, which have to do with uh, primarily with self-interest. Opening up to that which is other is uh, the opening of the heart. And that's as the troubadours saw it. It is the opening of the heart. I can certainly understand, though, why the church was threatened by this, because how can you have a church if everyone's libido is, is her own God? Why not? Why can't the church handle, handle that? If you can, if you can uh, uh, sanctify a marriage that has been arranged, why can't you sanctify a marriage where two people have joined each other? So the courage to love became the courage to affirm against tradition whatever knowledge stands confirmed in one's own experience. Yeah. Why was that important in the evolution of the West? Well, it was important in that it gives the West uh, this accent, as I've been saying, on the individual. That he should have faith in his experience and not simply mouth terms that have come to him from other mouths. I think that's the great thing in the West. The validity of the individual's uh, experience of what humanity is, what life is, what values are, against the monolithic system.